Okay, let's take a look at the structure of silicon, which is in fact the same as the structure of diamond. And uh, we usually call it diamond cubic. Okay, so I've got some right here. Now you might look at that and say, that does not look cubic. And in fact, it's very difficult to see the cubic unit cell inside this, this mess or this, in fact, what I hope you will soon see is, is beautiful, this beautiful symmetry here um, that is present inside um, silicon or, or diamond. And it's based on this structure right here, which is a tetrahedron. And that's what I want to show you. All right, so I've got a cube here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice that cube up like this into these little, um, I, I like to call them subcubes. Okay, so I've sliced it into eight of these little subcubes. Okay, eight subcubes, if you will. Okay, the whole black thing is the, the full unit cell, but these are the subcubes. And the other thing that I want to tell, actually, just for some context, is remember that. <clears throat> Silicon is what we do to form silicon. We know from experimentation that there, there's four bonds coming off of each silicon, and they're each the same. But the electron configuration seems to indicate that we've got some S and some P. In fact, we've got one S that's at a different level from the three P. So how are we going to rationalize that and get three bonds you know, this is methane, but the same idea. Three bonds are all the same length. How are we going to do that? And the way that we do that is we say, all right, well, that model is clearly not working for us. Let's propose another model. And if we assume that, in fact, we take one of those S's and three P's and we blend them together. You know, you got to blend a, in, in a car of an con internal combustion engine and some electric motors. We call it a hybrid, right? It's a blend of the two. If you've got a bicycle that's kind of like a road bike, kind of like a mountain bike, it's a hybrid. Uh, so what's this? It's kind of like S and kind of like three parts P. So we call it SP3. It's SP3 hybridized. SP3 hybridization. Okay, and so we're going to form three equivalent bonds. Now our job is, though, within this, this structure, how on earth is this going to be diamond cubic? And why do we mention the cubic sometimes? Sometimes you just say diamond, but often you hear cubic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to position some atoms, and I'm going to go ahead and position a few other atoms. We've got the corner atoms, no problem. I'm going to position the face-centered atoms. So we're going to start with a structure that we know, which happens to work in this case. Um, and then I'm going to position some of the back faces here. Sorry, that back one there, the bottom one, and that bottom corner. Shaded those in. I hope that's. Oops, I got an extra bunch of extra ones there. Let's try that again. Sorry about that. There we go. Back, bottom, left, and bottom left corner. Okay, so there's our face centered cubic positions. And now what we are going to do is we're going to direct our attention to the bottom, just, just for the purposes of understanding this. Um, we're going to go, actually we're going to go to the front of the unit cell. Okay, you can start to see towards the front, coming up towards you. Towards the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do front, I'm going to do towards the left, and towards the bottom as I've indicated. Okay, front, bottom, left, I'm going to highlight that for you. That would be, okay, this little subcube right here okay that's made up or that creates this little cube that I'm darkening in for you here so hopefully you can see that we're just gonna direct our attention towards that little cube there okay and if we look at that and we position now an atom right in the very center of that subcube okay so that is at the center of the little subcube okay then I could create bonds coming off of that and find that in fact so I could create a bond from here out to that corner from here to this corner from here to this one and you can appreciate the geometry, although my sketch might not be that clear. There's four bonds, and they're all the same length. They're all the same length, each of these four bonds. And 
um, that's creating that tetrahedral symmetry that we saw here. And in fact, that we also see on each and every one of these atoms here, carbon for diamond or silicon for, uh, for crystalline silica, uh, sorry, for crystalline silicon. Um, and so each of these, like take a look at this guy right here, it's got one, two, three, four equivalent bonds coming off of it, forming a tetrahedral, um, uh, the tetrahedral geometry. So then, that's not the whole story, we've got to position some other ones, and so the other ones that we're going to position are going to be towards the back, bottom, right. Okay, that's this one here, sorry. That is going to be this one here, which is at the back. The back. Okay. At the right. And at the bottom still. Okay, but spaced out in, in space. Uh, I could draw those lines in, if you like. The bonds. Bond it this way, this way, this way, and this way. Okay. And then we're going to similarly do that. Now this it starts to look messy, I appreciate up at the top, front right. Okay, so where is that? That is now the, um, <clears throat> towards the right, at the top, and at the front. Okay, and then final position, there's going to be four of these that are occupied. The final position is back there, and that is the back, um, top, left. Now that looks kind of like a mess, especially if I go and draw in all the bonds for you, which I'm usually reluctant to do, but I can, I can try. So there's going to be this one, this one, this one, and that one. <clears throat> Alright, but you can see this is, looks like a mess, right? This was this, you know, if you remember, well that bond is actually going to the back, now this one here is going to the front, but it looks like um, they're all superimposed on top of each other, so it becomes quite a mess. So usually what I prefer to do is actually um, this, that I will shade in. So I'll show you. I'm going to draw for you a little cube here, and I'll try to show you where those atoms reside. So I'll draw a little cube. Okay. Okay, so here's our cube. I, and what I do is I'll slice it as I did, slice it into those eight little subcubes. Okay, that's what I'm doing here, slicing it into the eight little subcubes. And then you remember that this one here, I'll make it red, was occupied. This bottom front left was occupied. And then I also said that the bottom right back was occupied, as was the top front right. Okay, so I'm shading in the exposed surfaces of the occupied interstitial sites, if you will. Those are the occupied interstitial sites. Because if we occupied all of them, there'd be more than four bonds coming off of each, uh, each of the atoms, and that, that would not, not, not be the case. So this is, in fact, a nice way that we can break this structure down. So you look at this, and you see that you can see the beautiful tetrahedral symmetry, but it's very difficult to see the cube. But as humans, cubes are nice, because cubes are they're nice. We can repeat them. We can fill a volume with them 100%. Uh, we can calculate the volume uh, of the unit cell nicely. For example, we also can, can cl clearly tell how many atoms are inside this unit cell. Now that's a bit of a mess there. Perhaps we look at this one and we say, well, how many atoms are there inside this unit cell? Well, being a cube is convenient for our, our human brains. You know, we know that there's going to be the corners, correct? It's going to be the corners, including that one. Okay, uh, so that's going to be f uh, eight corners times one eighth. And then we said that there's also going to be the, the face centered positions, right, that we saw before. Um, and just like we saw for FCC, that means there's going to be a total of four atoms in the FCC type positions. And then there's also, at the center of this, there's one atom in the tetrahedral site or coordination number equal to four. And there's, of course, one here as well. There's one there. It's completely inside, and there's one there. So in total, there's four atoms, 
from the tetrahedral sites. And so we can quickly and easily see that there's eight atoms in total inside that unit cell. We could fairly easily calculate a theoretical density or something like that if we'd like to. So <clears throat> although the basic repeating symmetry is the tetrahedra, we often use the cubic unit cell because it's convenient. All right, anyway, I hope that you see the beauty in that uh, structure. I think it's absolutely fantastic and how just how gorgeous that symmetry is at the atomic level. Okay, thanks a lot.